Okay, this is Brian Forrester coming to you from Central Florida, beautiful Central Florida. No, South Florida. Oh, is it South Florida? Yeah. Oh, this is Chris, and Chris is, has just uh, corrected me. We're actually in South Florida. South Florida. North of Miami, though. Yes. Okay. So Florida is more north. Okay. Not going to tell you exactly where I am because it's a secret. <laughs> But uh, successfully made it from uh, spending a little more than a month in New Jersey. Uh, some of you may well know that my, my trip to Egypt was cut short, or cut short because of the international incident that you all know about. So I'm here, and I'd like to invite you at this time to feel free to ask me questions. Any questions you want pertaining to basically everything. Moon UFO. No, I didn't, but supposedly uh, they're setting off a bunch of satellites, um, so we may be able to observe that tonight. I think it's a whole, something like 90 satellites were launched as part of this new um, <coughs> system of Wi-Fi that's going on or something like that. What trip am I looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to going home. Looking forward to going home to the coast of Peru. Uh, Schwaller de Lubitz, I'm slightly as, uh, acquainted with his work. Of course, um, it was John Anthony West who was a great proponent of Schwaller de Lubitz and the examination of uh, Luxor Temple. Uh, Denmark, yes, I was in Denmark about five years ago. I was at a conference there. Very nice. Hello, Stephen. So, any questions pertaining to um, the ancient places I've been? No, none of my, as far as I know, none of my uh, videos have been deleted. I, I've deleted some of the older ones because they're out of date. Uh, Scotland? I haven't been to Scotland in many years. No, no, I don't think there are any megalithic structures in North America. Um, having explained that up until about 12,000 years ago, North America was covered in at least a mile of ice. Well, Stephen Greer, um, I don't, I've never met the man, and I don't really have any, any comments about people who I've not personally met. So um, I find some of the work that he's done quite intriguing. But, uh, you know. Yep, be searching the Caribbean. We're going to the uh, Everglades in a few days. What box in what hallway, please? Oh, all metal mic. Very kind of you. Five dollars. Most kind of you. Well, most elongated skulls around the world are the result of head binding. The ones that are of most uh, intrigue, of course, are the Paracas in Peru and the, uh, the ones found around the Black Sea. They seem to be related genetically, so it could very well be that they were the same people. A subspecies of human called Homo sapiens Paracas. Of course, now my work on the elongated skulls is being... Uh, Sorry, I had a slight connection problem. I guess I shouldn't move around so much. I should stay closer to the house, which is what I'm doing now. The Costa Rica stone spheres. Well, I may actually be seeing them in a couple of weeks. Some people think they were navigational markers, uh, but I'll learn, of course, a lot more if um, I'm able to go there in two weeks. Yes, I'm back. The hitching post of the Senate Machu Picchu was likely used for the solstices and the equinoxes and also the movements of the moon, the sun, and the planets. It was probably used every day, not just for solstices. Uh, Praveen Mohan, I hope to meet with him at some point. We're in, um, 
we're in email contact. He's been a fan of mine for quite a long time. I've been a, a fan of his for quite a long time. So if and when we go to India, then um, I'd very much like to uh, hook up with him because he's done fabulous uh, work. So please look up Praveen Mohan if you're interested in megalithic sites in uh, India and also Sri Lanka. Those, I think, are his special areas. Or mine are more Egypt, South America, uh, Jordan, etc., as you know. Okay, well, with the Paraka skulls, um, getting s to some degree um, uh, bureaucratic um, problems, uh, the results that uh, appeared uh, were not uh, what some bureaucrats uh, wanted, and uh, therefore they claimed that all the samples were contaminated, which they were not. And uh, so I'm going to try to continue of the elongated skulls as time goes on. It's just, it's not going to be as simple as it was. Uh, Randall Carlson is an absolutely brilliant human being. Well, I'd like to work with Randall Carlson and Praveen Mohan and various other people. Yep, Paracas, uh, blonde Paracas skulls have been found in the Paracas area. No, the Hitching Post of Machu Picchu does not have magnetic uh, anomalies because it's made of granite. It's the um, andesite at Pumapunku which has major magnetic anomalies. Ancient Egyptian faith could be the oldest. Uh, it's called uh, the name of Egypt in ancient times was Kemet. And the ancient people are called by some of the Kemetians, the pre-dynastic people. Uh, so their belief system could be the, could be the oldest on the earth. It could go back thirteen thousand years or more. So older than Samaria, older than China, older than India. Oh, Lost History Channel! Excellent that you're tuning in. Thank you so much. Very much enjoying the weather down here. No, I think one of the major culprits of the Younger Dryas period was um, an asteroid that hit Greenland around 12,800 years ago, supposedly a, uh, a mile in diameter. With the um, impact force of 57 million atomic bombs. Adam's calendar? No, no, honestly, I don't think anybody knows how old Adam's calendar is. It's a bunch of rocks, you know, a bunch of big stones in South Africa. Africa, and uh, you can't date them, so claims, any date claims on Adam's calendar is like, who knows? I've been there once, and I found it interesting, but I didn't find it incredibly fascinating. Uh, truly enigmatic sites are the one, ones that you go to, and then you go to again, and again, and again, and again, and Adam's calendar, I don't know if I'd ever bother going back again. Uh, I did find it intriguing. It's always good to visit as many of these ancient sites as possible, just so that you, um, you know, a first-hand impression is much better than watching someone's video. Ah, greetings Cape Town. Cape Town's a very beautiful city. Eye of the Sahara? Nope. I know somebody who went there and he said it's not impressive at all. Devil's Tower, I believe, is the core of an ancient volcano. What mysterious stone circles? The ones in South Africa? Uh, I saw some. I didn't find them all that mysterious. Uh, construction technique of them is not very impressive. You know, they're just stacked rocks. At the same time, I know we're referring to footprints that have been found, or alleged footprints that have been found, where uh, dinosaurs are walking in the same area as people, but I don't buy it. How did the Paraka people die? I think they were exterminated by the Nazca culture around 100 AD. The Paracas were responsible um, for most of the Nazca line system. What is my favorite drink? Well, in the morning it's coffee, in the evening it's red wine.
I, I have no favorite scythe. They're all great. I would say the most mysterious one is Puma Punku, which I've been to between 55 and 60 times. Robert Seffer, yeah, I'm, I, or I am in contact with him. Valley of the Kings, I think, are completely pre-dynastic. I think they were constructed by a very ancient advanced culture, and then they were inherited by the dynastic people and used as cemeteries. Uh, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon are my favorite red wines. The Judah Kula Rock, well, I think that's in, um, where is that located? South Carolina or something like that? I'd love to be on Joe Rogan. Please contact Joe Rogan and uh, email him and ask him to get me on his show because I am in the I am in the U.S. right now, so it wouldn't be that difficult for me to fly to Los Angeles to be on his show. Oh, good. It's my pleasure to do the question and answer thing. Yeah, I've heard that theory that the the sun goes nova every twelve thousand. 500 years, very intriguing. Yes, I think the uh, cataclysmic events that have recycle. Well, the technology used to do the ancient sites is probably beyond our present level of technology. I don't plan to go, but thanks. No, I don't really believe in the um, in the Nibiru thing theory, and I've and I've related to that. I've read um, a little bit of Sitchin's work, but I didn't really find it all that fascinating. I think I've read about ten pages of one of his books and just didn't find find a lot of what he was talking about plausible. Well, some of us independent researchers help each other, some of us don't, some of us like each other, some of us don't. Well, the theory about Saturn being the first sun, it's, that's intriguing. I think that's the Thunderbolts project. I've watched some of their videos and find it quite, quite, uh, quite intriguing. Well, thank you, Vagabond. Greetings, Poland. Yeah, interesting, far-fetched. Uh, some people think his translations were good. Some people think his translations were bad. I don't know. I don't read that script. Sakse Waman, or Sakse Waman. Yeah, CFAPS is good. No, I don't think that the moon is an old burnt-out sun. And there's so many different theories about the moon, that it was caught by Earth or whatever. I don't know. I think there are great secrets on the moon, just like there are great secrets in Antarctica that are being um, hushed up at this point in time. But hopefully some of, that, some of that will become uncovered as time goes on. My pleasure, third, third phase of moon. If you're not uh, fans of third phase of moon, the Cousins Brothers, please look up their channel. It's really good. They have a huge uh, subscription base. They have uh, huge numbers of videos. They do really good work. Um, it's my pleasure to go on, on their show once in a while. And I'm sorry that the camera is so unstable, but this is my phone. And this is the only technology I have right now to play with. Again, I'm just very happy to be in Florida where I'm warm. The Sphinx a lion? Yes, I think the Sphinx was originally a lion. Some people think it was a dog, but I think it was uh, a lion, probably a female lion. And if you want to learn more about that, look up the, um, the works of Stephen Mailer. Giant stone spheres? Well, that's a big question. Something logical rather than, uh, you know, tombstones for people or whatever. Well, the name Sphinx supposedly does come from the Greek. 
Out of Africa theory, uh, yeah, I think I think the out of Africa theory works, but it's not the only only theory. It's not the only um, way that you had human migration. Uh, maybe uh, Homo sapiens sapiens started in Africa, but maybe not. Maybe it's maybe uh, we've been branching out from different places. The Gimpy Pyramid in Australia. I've seen some photos. They don't look doesn't look like it was a really well made structure, but it's okay. You know. I'm sure there are intriguing things. Look up the Gosford Glyphs in, in Australia. Uh, the pyramids in China, I have not visited and I never plan to. What's the function of the boxes at the Serapium? Probably energetic structures, possibly energy storage structures of some kind, way beyond uh, our present capacity. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to our Malta trip in March of next year. Look it up on my website hiddenincatours.com and you can see all the details. Underwater sites? Well, this area of Florida would be great for that kind of thing. You know, the nice shallow area here and in the Yucatan, possibly uh, the origin of so-called Atlantis, etc. How were the Egyptian pyramids built? With very advanced high technology. Uh, as regards Petra, yes, there's a lot of charring, uh, blackening of the stone at Petra, almost always on the western surfaces. So I think at sunrise, Petra was struck by um, a massive cataclysm or series of, of cataclysms, <coughs> which would have vaporized anyone who was there. Because the standard story is that Petra's about 2,000 years old, and I don't believe that whatsoever. Gobekli Tepe is supposedly <clears throat> around 12,500 years old. <coughs> okay, I've got about two more minutes here. And then I have to have a glass of water. But we may be doing another um, video tonight looking at some ancient artifacts that are in the house that I'm visiting right now. Right, Eric von Daniken, yeah, I've met him a few times. Very nice man, <coughs> absolute pioneer. But whether his theories are still relevant, I don't know. Levitation of pyramid blocks, I believe so. Yes, and I believe in anti-gravity technology in the distant past. I will do more streams like this. <coughs> Sorry, tickling my throat. The lotus bowls, well, looked like in Egypt looked like part of a mechanism. Cool cars, aren't they? Okay, one more minute, and then I have to uh, have to quit. But I will come back maybe later on, later this afternoon. Yeah, I've conversed with Praveen Mohan. Great, great man, great um, researcher. Mud fossils. I consulted with a friend of mine who's a geologist, and she said, most likely, no. Or at least most of them. Mud flood. I don't know about that either, really. Pyramids underwater, uh, maybe some small ones. Great Lost History Channel. You have a great channel. That's another great channel. Uh, Lost History Channel. Look him up. His work is great. How old is humanity? I think two, a couple of hundred thousand years. Okay, Corky sounds good. Wayne Herschel. Uh, I was in contact with him about 10 years ago, but haven't heard a word from him since. What happened to the technology? It's either being hidden or the people who used it took it with them. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being part of my channel. Please share my channel with others because it, my channel's not growing very fast anymore. And I would like to have more subscribers and uh, that would give me more, much more reason to make more videos in the future. So. 
thank you so much. Take care of each other. Um, I'm glad I'm here in sunny Florida. It's wonderful. And uh, I'm going to try to work my way into Mexico if it's safe. So bless you all.